about today. And the disturbing events in our country. I'm a child of the 60s, proud of it. So I'm walking down Madison Avenue with Marty Faison, black boy from the ghetto, who worked with me. It wasn't easy to argue over a cup of coffee, a chock full of nuts, on Madison Avenue. Who had it easier, the Cuban Jew at Dance of its Gerald Sample, or the black from Harlem? When I got out of the Air Force, I hitchhiked to Mexico City. On the way back, I made a mistake of knocking on the door of an old black hotel only. I was arrested immediately by some Georgia cracker cops in Macon, Georgia having to prove that I was really a Jew. It's incredible. You couldn't possibly be a Jew and be in Macon. And that I really was in the United States Air Force. And I was not a rabble rouser for the civil rights movement. You all remember, uh, Shwana. And I was, My first secretary was black, and she was beautiful, very beautiful. And I was one of the creative guys of Black is Beautiful. I helped to found it. <laughs> I went into Spanish Harlem to get one of the young lords out of jail. I marched with the civil rights movements against Judge Julius Hoffman and the Chicago 7. I wrote letters to the New York Times advocating for justice for blacks and Puerto Ricans. I slept with black airmen in the same barracks in the Air Force. We flew together, we ate together. I could sweat Jewish and they could sweat black. I rode with the blacks in the black neighborhoods by subway, by bus, and the New York yellow cabs. So what I'm about to say is that I have no sense of privilege because I'm a child of the Holocaust and the 60s. When we arrived, my family and I, in Tucson, we accidentally bumped into a very well-known fellow in Bisbee. His name was Don Goldwater. His uncle Barry Goldwater, the family that had a general store right here in Tucson and up in Phoenix. Mainly he was best known for being Brigadier General in the United States Air Force. He became Senator Barry Goldwater and ran for President of the United States of America. All this flashed before me as I bumped into Don. He was pushing his campaign manager around in a wheelchair because he unfortunately had MS. We became friends and when he ran for governor against Janet Napolitano, I became his team leader here in Pima County. It had taken me a long time to go from being a religious, orthodox yeshiva boy who grew up in a predominantly democratic environment to um, a conservative republic. You might say one of the most formative periods of my life was being a member of the United States Air Force on flying status, flying to and from Vietnam. To Vietnam with cargo and coming back from Vietnam with a human cargo, dead bodies of American servicemen, over 50,000 that came back in a box. Then I and my fellow veterans were created were treated rather 
with contempt by my fellow liberal Democrats, my friends, friends no longer. And so began my personal battle from within the Jewish establishment. The Jewish establishment that did not follow the precepts of the Torah. The most difficult laws of Leviticus, the do's and don'ts. For about 40 years as an American conservative, I have had to witness people like Charles Schumer, Jerry Nadler, and Adam Schiff advocate positions contrary to the Torah that would make the Sanhedrin blush. Let us look at Talmudic law. Dina, I mentioned this before, Dina Malchuta Dina. The law of the land is the law. A principle in Jewish religious law. And the civil law of the country is the binding upon the Jewish inhabitants of that country, and in certain cases, is to be preferred Jewish law. The concept of Dina di Malchuta Dina appears at least, at least 25 places in the Shulchan Aruch. The principle of Dina Malchuta Dina means that for Jews, Obedience to the civil law of the country in which they live is viewed as a religious mandated obligation. And disobedience is a transgression according to Jewish law. This principle is subject, however, to the qualifications that the government enacting the law must be one which is recognized by Jewish law as having legitimacy. The law must apply equitably to all the inhabitants, Jews and non-Jews alike, and the law must not contravene the spirit of the laws derived from the Torah, even if a particular regulation may be contrary to a provision of Jewish law. Visions of this idea come from Yirmiyahu, his letter, Babylonian Exiles, quote, Seek the peace of the city to which I have exiled you and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in the peace thereof, you shall have peace. And Rabbi Hanina, who had been the deputy chief of the Kohanim before the Roman conquest of Jerusalem and the destruction of the second temple, is cited in the Talmud in Avot as saying, pray for the welfare of the government. For were it not for fear of it, people would swallow one another alive. Unfortunately, we see this unfolding on our streets here in America today. As Jewish Americans, we have to really dig down deep and think about what is the derech hayasha, the road to travel. Do we want what we have now, chaos? No rule of law? Or do we want to return to peace? Lo yisagar el goy cherev. A nation shall not live sword up against a nation, neither shall they know war anymore. That is Isaiah. A house divided, a house divided cannot stand, unfortunately. The Hatfields and the McCoys. We have to come together. Keep a stiff upper lip, bite the tongue, and reach out. Make it happen. Restore law and order. And for Jews especially, we're mandated. Dina, Mahuta, Dina, 
the law of the land, the law. Shabbat Shalom.